and this is where your eyes just start to water and you promptly flip the table and go home, okay? They ask you to prove this monster of a result. Let me just write it down, okay? This is what they want. Z to the 6 plus Z cubed plus 1 equals, take a deep breath, this guy. <laughs> well, I, let me, I'll just write this down and let me make a comment on that as soon as I, I just want to make like sure I don't do get the terms wrong. Right. backwards and do like crazy stuff until they get something <laughs> awesome. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. It's like, oh, that looks suitably cool, I guess I'll stop there. <laughs> okay. Yes. And they have to try it. Hmm, now, um, the, qu the first question, the secondary side tangent question oh, they've asked was, how do, how do people come up with these things? Um, the comment I'd just make is, like, just have a look at the, um, like, part D, for instance, the result we just proved, and also part F, which we will also prove, and I'll give you, it's just a number, by the way. Um, how did, like, cos pi on 9, pi on 9, um, what is pi on 9 in degrees? And 180 divided by 220. It's 20 degrees. 20 degrees? What do we know about the exact value of 20 degrees? Yeah. Answer, almost nothing, right? It's not 30, 45, 60. It's not something nice and neat, okay? And then they somehow pull a rabbit out of a hat and get D and then get F, right? Out of something which should be an irrational disaster, okay? Like in both senses of the word, okay? <laughs> now, the fact that they can pull out so much information and so many relationships out of so little, like what have they done? They don't, they've just said, oh, well, ninth roots of unity. Let's just start digging and see where we go, right? I think it's very profound. Um, these kinds of results can get replicated for all different kinds of answers. And it's part of how, it's part of how calculators know. How do they know what sine 23 degrees is? Like, how do they do that? Okay, and parts of it come from all of these results. Okay, let's have a go. And the first thing I want to notice is, again, when you are given a result to prove, Look carefully at what you've been given and think about what pieces of this connect to what you've already done, okay? Example, have a look at the arguments. Have a look at the arguments. 2 pi on 9, 4 pi on 9, 8 pi on 9. Is this likely to be in connection to the previous part? Definitely. Yes. Mm, now, I would actually suggest no. I, I think D gets skipped over, okay? When you look at D, D is the part which has gotten rid of the 8 pi on 9. Right? And now it's reappeared in E. I think E actually has more to do with C and its earlier parts. Because the 8 pi on 9 is there. They haven't eliminated it. When we get to F, you can see the 8 pi on 9s are gone. Right? So it looks like they'll use it again. But at least on E, I'm going to draw most of my clues from part C and earlier. Okay? Alright, here's the second thing. Have a look. You've got this, and you've got this. I notice that essentially I'm just taking a polynomial to the of degree 6 and I'm just replicating it with another polynomial of degree 6 okay so how do I get from here to here do you agree that this is just a fancy and weird factorized form of this do you agree with that that's a weird factorized form of this okay factorizing 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 is a hard problem when you're dealing with you know high degree polynomials and that kind of thing, right? We know how to deal with small degree, okay? We know that I can write something like this in this form, okay? Now, keep in mind, the reason I know this can be written like this is because I know it's a quadratic, which is how many roots? Two. Has two. And so I'm going to have two linear factors. Do you agree with that? Now, there are two linear factors here. This is a polynomial of degree six. How many linear factors will it have? It will have six, and because of the fundamental theorem of algebra, I know exactly what those six linear factors will be. In fact, about 10 minutes ago, I drew them, okay? So here's what I'm gonna say. Look, this thing, I should be able to break it up into one, two, three, four, five, six parts. I notice there are only three here, right? We'll get to three in a second. What are the six parts? Six parts. <coughs> z to the six plus z cubed plus one. I named the six parts earlier, didn't I? I named those solutions. And solutions, like minus two and minus three, give me factors, right? Minus two and minus three are solutions. So x plus two, x plus three are factors. Do you agree with that? So therefore, the factors of this will be, uh, sorry, z, 
z take away, what did I call my first solution again? I called it z1, because it was the first solution, right? And then the next one is going to be z2, and then the next one will be z3, and so on, all the way to the end. Wait, would you use the conjugate rule? Okay, now I'm going to get to the conjugate in a second, right? I just want to get this down because this is a conceptual leap, right? We owe this to the fundamental theorem of algebra and the fact that I know I can write a linear factorization of every polynomial if you let me work in complex numbers, right? Do you remember? We can't always do this if you're only in real numbers. For instance, uh, x squared minus... Uh, Wait, b squared minus 4ac, if I make this like plus 3x plus, uh, I want this to be big, no, no, 5, okay, that'll do. If this got given to you, right, the discriminant of this guy is 9 take away 20, negative 11. You cannot do a linear factorization of this in the real numbers, right, you're stuck. But if you give me complex numbers, I can write a linear factorization, like so, right, it'll be weird. But it'll exist, okay? And that's what this is. That's what this is, okay? Now, we said a moment ago, um, we've got three factors here. They're not linear factors either. They are quadratic factors. Do you notice that? <coughs> so that kind of implies I want to pair up some of these factors, okay? What's a natural way to pair some of these factors? Conjugate. You use the conjugates, okay? So I'm going to go z take away z1, and I'm going to pair it with z take away z4, which is really z take away the conjugate of z1. That, okay? Then you've got this, conjugate, and this. They are the same factors. I've just rewritten the conjugates appropriately, and I have reordered them to make the conjugate pairs obvious, okay? Okay, now we're ready to go.